My name is Jake, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I wanna talk about why the FIRE community loves VTI. VTI is the total US stock market ETF from Vanguard. Many people know this ETF as the index fund in VTSAX. If you follow the FIRE movement, this ETF is not new to you. And I wanna talk about why everyone in the FIRE community loves this ETF. So in the video today, I wanna to talk about four topics. The first, I wanna talk about VTI and really dig into what it is and help you understand the ins and out of what this ETF is. The second part is I wanna really dig into the simple path of wealth, this concept, this book that was written by J.L. Collins. The third part of the video is I wanna compare VTI compared to the S&P 500, kind of, you know, back test the different performances and also understand the, the fund overlap. So how much of v, VOO is in VTI, et cetera, et cetera. And then lastly, I wanna talk about what dividend investors can learn from JL Collins. Now, the reason why I'm citing JL Collins here so much is I was, he was the first person that I learned about the fire movement from. Yeah, you have other others out there like Mr. Money Mustache and the Mad Fientist and, and other really great, great uh, bloggers out there. But the one that I stumbled upon first was JL Collins. And JL Collins, he wrote this book back in, and he started his blog back in 2011. And it feels like, you know, he was the one, one of the only ones talking and prescribing clearly what, your normal person should invest in if they're looking to reach financial independence. Now, we all know of very famous money uh, gurus out there that talk about, yeah, you got to invest into to mutual funds, you got to invest into growth and international and value mutual funds, but never gives an actual investment or an actual uh, ETF name of what they're talking about. Now, I'm sure there's different motives behind that, and I'm sure a lot of you will understand who I'm referring to here. And if you do, you can leave a comment and kind of strut your stuff there. But there's a very particular person out there that's very well known, well respected, who always talks about mutual funds, high growth mutual funds, get your 14% compounded performance. And when I was first learning about that, I got really excited. But what confused me the most was, okay, I just have to find the highest performing mutual fund. Which one is that? Uh, okay, I'm going to go look at a list of you know different mutual funds. All right, I guess I'll pick this one. I have no idea if it's good or not. I don't know what the expense ratio is. I don't know what it is, but it, it has great historical performance. That was the experience that I went through prior to learning from JL Collins. Okay, and so that's the reason why I'm sharing this with you because JL Collins, to my knowledge, and I'm sure maybe there's something else out there, somebody before him that really got prescriptive and said, hey guys, stop what you're doing, stop all the complexity, stop paying all these crazy fees, buy VTSAX, buy VTI. So to my understanding, JL Collins back in 2011 was really the one that pioneered this idea of putting everything into VTSAX or VTI. And ever since then, everyone's been catching on and everyone in the fire movement kind of has been following, you know, JL Collins. And it's looked a little like this. Oh, I bet you weren't expecting that one. All right, cool. So anyways, let's take a look at VTI. So VTI is the total US stock market. So there's no international, there's no bonds. This is just pure equity. And so if you invest in the VTI, you immediately are purchasing a stake in the American economy. Okay, you purchase one share or one fractional share of VTI, you get instant uh, you get instant ownership or a slice of ownership into the American machine, okay? And so the way that this ETF is structured, this is a passive index fund or an ETF, right? So VTSAX is the index fund version. 
VTI is the ETF version of this. And it's a passive investment. It's not actively managed. That's why the expense ratio down here, 0.03%, an incredible expense ratio. Just really, you get overall, the do-it-yourself investor gets a huge bang for your buck when you invest into VTI. So the way that this ETF is set up, it's market cap weighted. So the largest companies in America will get the largest target allocation or the largest weighting in this ETF. So for example, Apple's the largest company in America, thereby it's going to make, make up the largest percentage in this ETF. So if you go down here, let's take a look at this. Let's see, look, let's take a look at the top holdings in here. So some of the top holdings, you got Apple, Microsoft, A Alphabet, Amazon, Tesla, United Healthcare, Berkshire, Johnson & Johnson, Meta, ExxonMobil. These are the top 10 uh, of, the, uh, of this index, and they represent just under 25%. So as you can imagine, you know, looking at these names, Apple, Microsoft, Apple, you know, Amazon, et cetera, it's very technology heavy. And you can see that here over to the right under the sector diversification that the largest sector uh, makeup here is in technology. And one thing that I wanna mention, a lot of these companies that are in the index today did not exist when this ETF was, in, was created. Now, the thing that I want you to start thinking about, and we'll talk more about this in a moment, is what is this index going to look like in 50 years? in a hundred years. And that's the magical thing about index investing. And we're gonna talk more about that in a second. So in a nutshell, that is what VTI is. It's market cap weighted, it's rebalanced on a regular cadence. Uh, I believe it's quarterly and it's set up in this way. Now I wanna take a second and I wanna talk specifically about why the FIRE community loves this ETF. And I think, you know, I would do JL Collins really a disservice if I were to just kind of phrase this in my own way. I'd rather give him the credit and I'd rather share my screen here and read through from his blog. And I'd highly recommend his blog if you're interested in look, learning more about the fire movement. This is not a flashy website. This is a blog that was built in 2011 and it looks the same today. He's not really done any modifications to his blog. So it's very, very much in its true original form, but I wanna read off what JL Collins has to say about why he loves VTI or VTSAX. So the first thing here is why the FIRE community loves this ETF is the rock bottom costs. Now what you have to understand is when JL Collins was writing his blog and writing his book and talking about all of this, index fund investing was really a minority of, of what was out there. There was not a lot of assets under management in index investing. And that all happened with Jack Bogle back in the 70s, okay? so. That's what he's talking about with the rock bottom costs. The second thing is broad diversification. Really what it's saying here is you own a slice of all of America. You get every, you get instant diversification to every company in the United States. The third thing here is it provides international diversification because a lot of these large US companies that are in this index or you know, even in the S&P 500, they also work and operate internationally. I'll give you an example. How many Apple stores are there in London? How many Apple stores are there in Berlin or in you know, other areas, areas of the world? How many McDonald's are in a, just a random village out in the middle of, of nowhere? So instead of getting an international ETF specifically, he's explaining that even though it's just a US focused ETF, you're still getting international exposure because the companies in the index operate internationally. The fourth here is that stocks provide the highest return of any investment class. And now what he's talking about here is he's comparing, you know, equities versus bonds or maybe commodities. So what he's saying is VTI is pure equity based, it's pure stocks, no bonds, you're going to get the highest return over an extended period of time. The fifth thing here is that stocks or equities in this case are a great hedge against inflation. When inflation is going up, the way to outpace inflation is to invest over the long term is to invest into equities. Now, equities can also be REITs. They can be uh, it can be consumer staples. It can be a bank. It can be uh, a healthcare company. The the main thing here is equities 
tend to outpace inflation over the long term. Now, the last thing here, number six, this is my absolute favorite because no one here listening to this video has a crystal ball. And so JL Collins, and I, I've got, you've heard me share this a few times on my channel. I'm always referencing JL Collins when I say this. VTSAX or VTI is self-cleansing because it's a market cap weighted ETF. The ETF, the way that it's set up, if Apple, which represents over 5% of the index, if Apple were to have a scandal, if Apple were for some, some odd reason that we can't foresee, go down in, in value, another company would take its place. And that was the example that I was talking about earlier. How many of these technology companies were around in the early 1990s? None of them, none of them. And what is gonna be hip and, and popular in 20 years from now, in 30 years from now? No one knows. And that is why index investing is such a great way for, you know, why you know the fire movement loves this is because it's self-cleansing. You don't have to have a crystal ball. All right, so before we go in and we take a look at the, uh, the differences between VOO and VTI, so the S&P 500 and the total US stock market, I wanna take a look in just for a second and look within Seeking Alpha at the yield on cost of an ETF like VTI. So generally you're not gonna see a dividend investor you know, just invest into VTI, but it's important to kind of see, well, what would the potential return be just from the dividend? And so let's take a look at that now. So the dividend yield, it usually hovers around one and a half to two and a half percent generally. If you can get VTI at around a 2% dividend yield, you're doing pretty good because um, generally you're not gonna see that. And in fact, what we can do is let's take a look at the average here. So the average dividend yield over time, you can see here, it's it's hovered between 175 and maybe just under 2%. So this is the average dividend yield. If you were dollar cost averaging, which most people in the FIRE community do, this is the average dividend yield that you could assume. But what I wanna look at is, really this is what I wanna look at is the yield on cost. So if you're dollar cost averaging, you're going to see a good rate of return when it comes to the dividend CAGR. So just because this is, you know, it's a total US stock market, it doesn't mean that it's not pumping out a ton in cash flow and dividend income. So what you can see over the last 10 years, this ETF, VTI, if you were to bought 10 years ago, you currently have a 4% yield on cost which is actually not really that bad. I mean, considering that the share price is, is you know, exploding relative to other, other investments that would give you a similar yield on cost, it's pretty impressive. So before we dive into the performance, you know, the historical performance of VTI versus the S&P 500, I think it's important to understand what the fund overlap is. Fund overlap is how much, what is the percentage of VOO or SPY, for example, in VTI? So let me, let me dumb that down for a second. What percentage of the S&P 500, which is 500 companies, rep is represented in terms of weighting with the total US stock market ETF in VTI? Okay, so I hope that that makes sense. What you can see here is that 99.4% of the S&P 500 is in VTI, makes complete sense, and that 13.3% of VTI's holdings are in SPY. Now, the thing that's important to understand is, yes, VTI has anywhere from 3,300, it fluctuates, you know, but over 3,000 companies are in VTI, and 500 under an SPY. But the important thing is the weighting, okay? The weighting here is 84%. So you're getting an 84% fund overlap. And so a lot of people ask, well, should I get VTI or VOO or should I get both? To be very honest, you can see the numbers here. You can do the math for yourself. 84% is pretty, there's pretty significant overlap. So if you only wanted to choose the one, okay, I don't think you're necessarily gonna miss out per se on, on market growth or, or opportunity. It really comes down to your personal preference. You know, I know a lot of 401k plans don't offer the total US stock market. So just rest assured that with the S&P 500 in a, on a weighting basis, you're, you're pretty well um, represented uh, in, in terms of 
the, the market because it's all market cap weighted, right? So in my opinion, if I had the choice between VOO and or SPY, VOO, S&P 500 versus total U.S. stock market, I personally would choose the total U.S. stock market because why not? Because why not? So, and, and we'll take a look at the performance and you can do, you know, you can make that assessment for assessment for yourself. But just in terms of full disclosure, in my Roth IRA, my HSA and, and, and such, I have a, a heavy amount allocated to VTI and I don't own the S&P 500 in those. Um, but in my 401k, where it's only available, where the S&P 500 is only available, I invest in the S&P 500. All right, so now let's take a look and let's compare VTI with the S&P 500. You should be able to do this in Seeking Alpha. You don't need the premium to be able to do this comparison. If you do wanna sign up to Seeking Alpha Premium, I will leave a link in the description below. You will not get a better price. So if you use my link, you'll currently be able to get 58% off. So instead of $240, it'll only cost $100. But yeah, it is an affiliate link. If you do use it, I do benefit and uh, I, I greatly appreciate it. Anyways, so. The key thing here that we want to take a look at is we want to look at the price return and we want to look at the total return. If you watch my last two videos, you are pretty much a pro when it comes to total returns by now. I'm hoping because I've talked about it so much. All right. So a couple of things that I want to take a look at. First, let's look year to date price return, which is just the share price. So if you were to go on Google.com or Yahoo Finance, this is what you're going to see in terms of the total return. This is with the dividend reinvested. So year to date, uh, the S&P 500 is doing just a little bit better, okay? Now bear in mind, there's like what, 88% or 84% I think it was, a fund overlap. So we shouldn't expect a huge variation or a huge delta between the two, okay? So let's take a look at, <laughs> I mean, come on, look at that. You can't even see the two colors. So over the last 10 years, the price return, you've done a little bit better with the S&P 500. Now, bear in mind, the S&P 500 has a bit more weighting towards growth. And over the last 10 years, we all know that growth has outperformed. So that's important to, to note. When it comes to the total return, the S&P 500 is still outperforming. All right, so now let's take a look at a further date here. And I think throughout the video, I may have said 1992. I don't know why I said 1992. It, it came out in 2001. So I'll probably have to go back in the video and, and edit that. But this fund, the inception date was in 2001. So what we'll, what we'll do is let's take a look from 2002. Let's take a look at, you know, January 1st, 2002. Now bear in mind the, the dot-com bubble is still a thing at that point in time. So we, we can maybe expect some, some crazy numbers here. But anyways, let's take a look and let's see from the beginning of 2002 up until today, the price return VTI has actually outperformed the S&P 500 over that time period. And when we compare the total return, the total return is actually also still beating it. So it's pretty much as expected with an 84% fund overlap. I, I think this is pretty reasonable. VTI has outperformed the S&P 500 on a total return basis. So lastly, I want to talk about what dividend investors can learn from J.L. Collins. I want to start by reading this quote. There are many things money can buy, but the most valuable of all is freedom. Freedom to do what you want and to work for whom you respect. That's what it ultimately comes down to is freedom. The reason why we invest is for hopefully for a specific goal. Dividend investors, what we often tend to do in I don't know if this is right or wrong. I, I don't want to speak for anyone. I can only speak for myself. I've noticed that when I simplify things, not only in my personal life, in my work life, but also in my in investing life, if you want to call it such, that I'm happier. If you ever find yourself overcomplicating things, making things more difficult than they need to be, this is something that I believe that every dividend investor can learn from in that Sometimes it's so simple, we it's almost hard. And I think we make our lives a lot harder than we have to by going crazy with, with our portfolio allocations, with the amount of companies and investments that we hold. We maybe try to over-engineer things. But something that I've learned, and I think every dividend investor can learn from J.L. Collins, is the simple path is really what leads to long-term success. And if you can somehow... If it, even if it's just a small amount, if you can simplify your, your investing strategy, it will set you up for long-term success.
Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that you learned something new. And uh, I will catch everybody in next week's video. You know what? I think we're going to be friends. Can everyone say hi to my friend? That's crazy. I just wanted to say thanks. I'm glad you came along, partner.